He's big, he's fast, but Eduardo Poli just can't keep it up. Bill Boa has too much power for its own good. Spirit of Norway made it two wins in a row after a thrilling battle of nerves in Russia, taken to the limit until the jolly motor bubble burst and the Italians ran out of steam. So it's on to Norway from Russia with love. Welcome to Arundel. I'm Barry Nutley. This is round three of the 1998 Class 1 World Offshore Powerboat Championship. 30 minutes by air from Oslo, five hours of broken coastline by road, we're racing through the fjords and out into the open sea. For many, Arundel is the most spectacular of the venues and is certainly one of the most popular with the drivers. I think that the spectators are great, you know, they, they all participate very much. They're used to, uh, to boat racing, whether they are the little class 3 or the class 2 or us. Um, the racing field is very interesting also, the course, because you have an area which is inside Tremoy, which is flat normally, and then you have an outside part, which can be very rough. It's very important to, before to starting, just five minutes before to starting, to adjust propellers for the race. You lose the race uh, with one inch of propeller more on less. In the last few years, they build, we kind of built up some sort of a database. We've been monitoring every race for the last four years here in Arundel. We're checking out the other boats and see what they've been doing. We had some success here, reasonable success in the past, and we think we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully have the right propeller for tomorrow. Over a thousand years ago, the Vikings sailed from here to raid England's shores. Making the return trip is Cardiff's Ken Thorne, who's making just as much of an impact with the locals. But it was a different sort of impact that gave him problems even before the pole position race on Saturday. The very first test we had out after the boat being repaired, we went out, it was a, quite a heavy swell, and the boat was handling fine. Uh, on the backward leg there, we were sort of doing about sort of 90, I suppose, 90, 90 knots, and all of a sudden there was a bang, and uh, the whole sea just leapt at me. <laughs> what had happened, the escape hatch had broken, and it was just coming through like, like just torrents, and uh, now I think I know what it's like to be inside a washing machine. It was like a, a complete vortex, it was terrible. Tell us a bit about the repair you did on this hatch. How did you fix it when the floor fell in? Didn't you go and get some plywood? We got some plywood. <laughs> we'd like to, we'd like to, we'd like to hear it. I, I think some of the boys were looking at some tables around the place here, but we, we actually found some marine ply and laminated with um, with quadroaxial uh, gel coat and uh, we just botched it, for want of a better word. It's held together so far. But the Welshman is back in the water for the pole position race, a timed one kilometre dash straight into the harbour at Arundel. After dominating the two previous rounds, it's no surprise that Bilbo is on top, crossing the line at over 153 miles an hour. Victory 7 does its best to challenge, while all eyes are on the new number four boat, it's Randy Schism and Ali Nasser that grabs second spot. It's the narrowest of margins, just eight hundredths of a second over Spirit of Norway, with Jolly Motor grabbing fourth. After all his heartache, Ken Thorne showed a respectable time. Having changed an engine in order to get out and compete, there was no time left to refine his propeller choice. So Bill Boa on top of the pile and with a healthy lead in the pole position championship. But Eduardo Poli has yet to score a point in the championship proper after a series of frustrating breakdowns on his high-tech boat. We did lots of changes, you know, we changed lots of parts in the gearboxes, which were the ones that were breaking. Uh, we hope that we have solved the problem. And uh, so I hope that uh, I'm going to end up uh, a race like I started the first two leading them, but uh, till the end. For that to happen, the gearboxes need to hold together. But this is the first time a computer-controlled gearbox has ever been used in powerboat racing. You can't duplicate the loads in the shop. You can make dyno cells and, and test things to a certain amount, but you still have to go and race it in conditions uh, to, to know which, what your problems are going to be. Unfortunately, this program has been a, a crash program from the start. Uh, we've worked 
extremely hard, and uh, we've had had some problems, but but for the most part, we have had no no serious failures, no gearbox failures as far as breaking breaking gears, shafts, casings, anything like that. Just cooling problems, some bearing problems, some things that that we expected we were going to have, but. Uh, and until you run, you really just don't know, you know, exactly what what problems you're going to have to deal with. Nothing breaks on the drawing board. <laughs> By contrast, two steady drives have put Saeed Al Tire in second place in the championship, just 13 points behind the leaders. But the Dubai-based victory team, once the trailblazers in the sport, have been finally caught by the others. Our boat is no longer as fast as it used to be, comparing it with the, you know, like Bilba with the diesel engines. Uh, but it is fast enough. It could be there. Uh, we've proven that in Bari. We've proven that again in, um, in uh, St. Petersburg. We just have to have the right selection, a little bit of luck, and we have to keep focus on our own destiny. Part of Dubai's answer is a new number four boat designed by Mike Peters, the man behind the winning designs of Spirit of Norway and last year's champion boat, Jolly Motor. We had always kind of considered uh, the Dubai team off limits. Uh, we could design and build boats for just about anyone else, but they had their own facility and their own people. And so for a number of years, as much as we wanted to design boats from, there was no opportunity at all. And then in the last couple of years, uh, their uh, lead that they had on the sport began to close. And uh, last year was a bit of a frustrating season for them. And so they approached us to, uh, to do a new design. Uh, and this new design is really meant to bring them up to par with what our latest uh, Tenkaros were. It's, it's not a, uh, intended at all as a breakthrough design. It's uh, simply to bring them up to being uh, competitive across the board. Once again, the Australian pairing of Bill Barry Cotter and Keith Hansen have been through the wars. Lucky to get home with their feet dry after virtually breaking the boat in half in Russia, they've had little time and even less sleep to get things fixed. We received the boat in Oslo last Thursday morning and we've been working 18 hour days with five or six of us until 10 o'clock yesterday morning to get the boat uh, here to Arendelle. The boat's only done two races. Uh, is this unusual, this sort of breakage at the, early in the season? No, no, because this boat is really a test to make the next boat correct for the conditions that it has to run in. If you make the boat too heavy, you'll never find out how much lighter you can make it. So this boat was always always designed to be uh, on the envelope of, uh, of self-destruction to see uh, where we could improve it and where we could take weight out. So this is not a problem. There's a change of uniform in Norway for Jan Hillestad. The promoter of offshore racing has put his race suit back on to team up with his old partner, Andreas Ugland. A year is a long time, but is it a bit like riding a bicycle you never forget? You normally never forget, yes, but you need a couple of laps to get uh, you know, warm again. So uh, I, I trust that up two, three laps tomorrow you will see us uh, driving like uh, all days. Jolly Motor was looking good in Russia until they lost their air scoop, and with it, about 100 horsepower. Back in the water in Norway, things are back on track. Lippi and Leone run similar Lamborghini V12 engines to the all-conquering spirit of Norway, but throttle man Massimo Lippi feels the championship is still too close to call. The championship is very good this year because uh, there's four or five boats with the same performance and uh, just uh, some very little thing to help uh, somebody for a win or not. Eduardo isn't the only poly around racing. His good-looking nephew, Tommaso, at just 20 years of age, has all the enthusiasm of his uncle surging through his veins. I've been growing uh, in the pits and the paddocks since I was a little child, for sure. And I, I had this passion, strong passion, since I was really a boy. And now that I, I, I have, I'm old enough to begin with, certainly my, my uncle's uh, help uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worthful to begin and uh, anyway what he says is I'll help you just to begin and then you have your legs and you run with your legs so if you like it, if you want to keep on doing that, uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. Once the most important harbour in Scandinavia, Arundel was home to Norway's largest fleet of sailing ships. For hundreds of years its people have exported everything from iron ore to ice. 
The local forests provided the timber to sell and the wooden ships that carried Norwegians around the globe. Now a combination of 13 companies are investing heavily in the future in training and development to their mutual advantage, a true demonstration of teamwork. The Ugland family are one of the most important in the whole country. Shipping and industrial magnets, the inspiration and drive for progress still comes from the senior member of the family. Andreas Ugland has invested millions of his personal fortune to turn this part of Norway into the silicon fjord of Scandinavia. I've always believed in uh, cross-fertilization and uh, today I'm looking at uh, information technology as a new industrial revolution. Arundel has opened its arms in typical Scandinavian fashion. 150,000 spectators are expected for the race. The streets are heavy with a carnival atmosphere as the boats make their triumphant entrance. But soon the fun is over and the hard work begins. Round three of this offshore championship and it's home territory for the championship leader. A double win for Spirit of Norway sees him clear out in front. Is it going to be three? The victory boats follow second, third and fourth. Jolly Motor Riviera and the most notable boat yet to score is number one in the list of the 13 competitors here today. Bill Boa, the big red boat which we've seen break down on two occasions. There they are, Bill Boa. Chazar Marine, the Welshman, good to see Ken Thorne back here. 13 entries, so something of a packed lineup here for the Norwegian Grand Prix at Arundel. Seven laps of this circuit, approximately 18 miles per lap. They start out in the open water, run down the minimum of the five nautical miles to the first turn, then into the very tight inland section. You can see just how narrow those stretches are through the fjord. Pretty hair-raising stuff, I can tell you. Seven laps, a total race distance, a little over 128 miles. Away from the shelter of the fjord, out on the open water, the start boat has signalled 12 boats then into action. We already have one retirement, the number 22 Nastro Azuro. The yellow boat failed to make it out of the fjord onto the start muster area, so we now have 12 runners, six nations, four diesel engine boats, eight Lamborghini powered, and it's a full house for round three of this championship, both on the water and lining the shoreline because Unlike the two previous races in Bari and St. Petersburg, virtually this whole course can be viewed from, at some point, from terra firma. We have a long way to go. We often say that in these commentaries. We're now with the jolly motor, Massimo Lippi and Lamberto Leone crew, the boat at the bottom of your picture, the jolly motor boat, and at the top of your picture, Spirit of Norway, the team that have won the first two rounds in this championship and lead the table with 40 points. But it is going to be much closer here. They have a long run down now in open water. There's a very big swell waves approaching two meters they will lift the boats very high in the air and alongside me Viv Williams my co-commentator he and I were out on this very stretch of water this morning in a fast boat so we have sampled firsthand nothing like at this speed though the nature of the sea and I think Viv we're in for some good racing today well I think we are Barry because it's all going to be about choice of propellers today the course really does come into two halves the, the part we're looking at now is in open water and it's been blowing from the southwest uh, quite a lot yesterday, not much overnight, but it's coming up again this afternoon. And there's a long swell out there, about a swell of a metre and a half, waves coming on the top of that, and it means that on that side of the course they're really going to have um, the time, to, the, the time to, to get their boats trimmed out right. Jolly Motor just tacked across and made a very tight turn on the inside of Spirit of Norway who seems to be running a little wide. However, this is a, almost a straight line on the open water down here. They have to go to the 
right of the boys. Spirit of Norway looking forward from the number 10 local boat. A huge amount of interest here with the fans, of course, because this is their hero. He is the man who leads the championship, and he kept it pretty quiet, but after St. Petersburg, they suffered a fair amount of damage to the rear end of this boat. They've got it fixed. It was almost a race of attrition in Russia. I wonder if the conditions here today are going to give them the same sorts of problems. The problem they're going to get at this uh, wave height is picking out the boys in front. There are three boys on this back of the island leg. They're quite small in comparison to the waves. And you saw the change of direction there with the boats literally hunting for that first mark. They'll pass that on their right hand side to starboard and heading down then to the next mark also left on their right before going off to the two lighthouses. On the first lap it's difficult for them to pick up those boys at the speeds they're travelling at. The boat you're watching now, the number nine Jolly Motor, is the very boat which won this race last year, crewed on that occasion by Leith Farron, who actually went on then to win the championship. He's now in the number one Bill Boa boat alongside Eduardo Polly. But this was the boat that won the race here in Arundel. So clearly the boat runs well in these conditions. It's actually three years old. It looks magnificent. It looks brand new. And it's certainly trimmed out perfectly and running well, Viv. Well, she is. She's just past the first mark there. As they're coming down past now the south side of, of the Trumpsoy Island. Um, good wave conditions there. You can see we're coming alongside another boat now, which I suspect is Spirit of, it, of Norway. And the two boats running well. You're looking backwards there from Spirit of Norway. And you can see one boat on either side, the two wakes and the three boats running very closely together. Over 18 miles each lap, three side by side. Well, left of your picture there, a very good victory boat. But now running ahead, it is Jolly Motor. Jolly Motor is the wake that you're seeing on the left of your picture. Then Victory emerging hard on the right-hand side, the familiar red boat, the SeaTech diesel-powered Bill Boa, with Lace Farron driving it, Eduardo Polly working the motors. Bill Boa on the right of your picture. We know it's a fast boat. It set a clear six miles an hour advantage in the pole position race here, here yesterday, and it is extremely quick. But even Eduardo Polly, the man himself, the veteran in this sport, look how he's overhauling Jolly motor he admits to the fact that he's slightly reserved this week about whether he can keep it going he's got to maintain this pace all the way to the finish but what an impressive boat that is Viv it certainly is it's got a little extra weight it's run by the diesels as opposed to the two and you can just see how rough it is there they came off one way nearly went into the next one the boat recovered beautifully beautifully trimmed and this is an absolute lovely shot as they come into the first of three boys between the two islands that they come round again turning them leaving them on their right hand side before coming into the very narrow and much more uh, calm waters of the fjord itself i'm just going to remind you in case you may not have watched the previous rounds in this series but these boats are doing speeds approaching 150 yes 150 miles an hour on water and it's very rough water it may not look it but there are some huge holes in those waves out there and just watch the antics of the boats they take air underneath there's a huge flat area underneath there it is a beautiful shot with jolly motor completely leaving the water massimo lippi lamberto leone high in the air and they're going well we're riding with them now the thrills here oh incredible stuff the surface very unpredictable. Bilbao coming in on the outside of that mark, but getting there first. Therefore, she had right on the mark, pushing the other ones into her disturbed water, and they're now turning up towards the north, and they'll be coming into progressively calmer water now. And this is where the decisions are have been all morning about what props to run. Do you run the props that are going to take you fast up the rough water, or do you run the props that are going to give you maximum speed on the inshore circuit? I think Bill Bauer has has gone has got the ratio right there. She's kept up well and won that first leg in the rough water, but she knows she normally has the speed over the other boats. But Eduardo and Leif, Eduardo throttling really does like to keep in front, and there he is in first place as they start coming through. We're now running down the narrow edge. Spectator boats lining the route here. The number 11 Riviera boat, the Australian pair. Tremendous 
action they've given us, but their boat nearly broke in half in St. Petersburg. They've been really up against it, getting, them, getting it repaired. They've even changed their number. They were running 14 earlier on in the series. Other boats to look for, of course, in this. There's a brand new boat running in the Victory 4 colours. The number four boat in the Victory team. That's a new one. We've got both of those Victory boats. The twin hull Victory 5 going there well. Said Al Tire. This is an extremely close competition indeed. And number one, Bill Boer looking good. So if he completes this lap, that'll be further than he's gone in recent weeks. Well, that's right. And you can see immediately that the water conditions have totally changed. She's coming through the uh, Arundel turn now, up by the town itself. Jolly Motors second behind, and we've got the two victory boats close up together. Now the victory boats probably have taken the propellers, uh, the, the decision to get their fastest propellers on in order to do about 70% of the court in, course in flat, flat water. And they're making that turn now, coming through, giving disturbed water, of course, to the boats that are all around them, and the, the navigation area up here is very narrow, so there isn't a lot of way that you can keep out of the disturbed water created by the other boats. Well, that's how close they are. This series this year, the 1998 Championship, probably one of the closest in many a long year. The victory, though, I remind you, victory five in third place in this race was in second place in the Championship coming here to Arundel. So they are consistent. They need to score points. Spirit of Norway currently in fourth place, but under some pressure now from the other victory boat. But race leader still Bill Boer in second place. It's the Victory 5 going well, Jolly Motor, then it's Spirit of Norway. Victory 5 with the twin cockpits side by side, sitting in that boat, Saeed Altair with Felix Sorales. Jolly Motor here, you can see running, she was running straight up the wake of the other boat in the flat water that she'd left. She's now running, I think, in second place, and it's absolutely beautiful to see all three Victory boats so much in the... Uh, in the frame this week. Bill Bauer's still up there in the lead, running beautifully in the flat water. She's obviously taken propellers that are going to give her that speed still in the flat, and she's already proved she can do it in the rough. Uh, Andreas Uckland here, uh, coming through with the boat that he's re-rigged, especially for this boat. Jolly Motor, still coming through in second place, repaired from the last race. And now we have uh, the boat number eight, I think it's Immersion, going right back at the lighthouse, still working in rough water, as you can see, running obviously much slower than the other race-leading boats. Maurizio Ceskin in the Immersion boat, Giovanna Giorgio. What a huge gap, eight seconds between Bill Boer and the runner-up. Oh, number 12, that's out of it already. Number 12, Nastro Azzurro, that is bad news for Tommaso Poli. Both he and the number 22, Nastro Azzurro, both teammates are out of it. So we're now down to 11s. Another retirement, number 13, Brazil. So Roberto Biancalana and Pipo Casconi also out of it. Again, falling by, the, this is a brand new boat. The number four, brand new victory for Kalfan Harib and Mohamed Al Gaith. 44 feet long, this boat, Viv. We'd expect it to go well on the open water. Well, it's a completely unknown uh, factor, but it's a Michael Peters design. Uh, it's absolutely brand new. This is its first race. We were expecting, we knew all about it in St. Petersburg and it's going to be very interesting to see how well it does. You can see there that Bill Bauer is still well ahead of Jolly Motors in our picture here now, and it's going to be the old story, I think. Is Eduardo going to nurse the boat enough to get a finish? He doesn't need to be that far ahead. Tailenders, we're with the tailenders now, and it's always a bit difficult, of course, in the narrow stretches of the field, lapping when the tailenders come past. Riviera, the Australians, a bit further down than we would expect them, expect them to have been. Number 11, the Australians, but they do like this event, there's no doubt about it. But they've actually said if there's another one run down in Italy at Taranto, they won't go because it simply doesn't get the crowds. Back with Jolly Motor again. Massimo Lippi, Lamberto Leone. Uh, Lippi, in his time, former Italian Air Force pilot. Lamberto Leone, in his time, the driver on that boat was spent many, many years behind the wheels of Formula 3000 and F1 racing cars. And I just wonder how Leone compares the antics of this boat to his Formula 1 testing days with Ferrari. 
beginning, when I just did my first time, but I think before it was a stupid sport because it was three down all time in a corner, but not after the, my first test. I'm very impressive because I look as if it's not a stupid sport because the sea is different, any 20 meters is different. Uh, the condition change after the first lap, the, con the, 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 the condition change, the sea go up, go down. When you turn left, you have the sea in front, right, behind. Uh, you have no one second to relax. When, when I drive in uh, from 2000, from the one, when you have one straight line, you have five or six seconds to relax. Here, no. You drive for one hour and a half, all time. You look inside, you look in front, you don't have any second to relax. There's a very powerful message there for any motor racing drivers who haven't quite cut it in their number one choice of sport because if they want big kicks, this is certainly where you can get big kicks. And there are some very big thrills going out now from the race leader, the pairing in there, Eduardo Poli on the throttles. He's driving those big SeaTac diesels and Leif Farron, the Saudi Arabian reigning champion, steering the boat round. And they must be thinking that a win here is on the cards. As they come up into this next section, it really is very narrow indeed. They're coming up now towards Arundel again, and it does get extremely tight. As the boats have just moved out a little, so they're not quite as close as they were on that first lap, but the three victory boats running very close together, and uh, the Spirit of Norway right in there as well. She's having, it appears that she's having to fight for her place today. That may be because she might be holding back a bit. She's got two win wins under her belt, she desperately wants a finish. Number five there is second overall in the championship, and so she wants a finish, but she also needs a good placing. This is the Victory 7 boat, though, as I've said, running with the Lamborghini, and then look on the left of your picture, the right foot of Randy Schism, the throttle man, hard against the bulkhead. That's to brace himself, because when the boat slams into the waves, it stops his lower half of the body moving forward. So that's a customary position, and we'll get used to seeing that over the weeks. You'll see now that number one is in, into the calm water again, a good lead. Now, the thing that we're waiting to see is, uh, Eduardo always says he likes to be in the front. And uh, when we were talking to him about going flat out all the time, he said, provided I'm in the front, I don't have to go flat out. But he is there today, he's back in the front. Is he going to drive the boat too fast? Is the boat going to put up with it? Are the drives and the gearboxes going to put, for, put up with it? We're now back with number 10, Spirit of Norway, and you can see Arundel straight in front of the boat there, and you can see how tight and reserved these turns are. They're coming right in to the centre of Arundel. They're literally only about 100 metres off the dock as they come past us here at the commentary position in Arundel, taking those turns very close, just missing the boys. It is a tight turn. They take the inside. Bill Bauer's taken a slightly wider line, and Norway is in front of the victory boats. Into third place, Spirit of Norway. Ahead of him, Jolly Motor. Race leader, number one, Bill Bauer. This is the race leader streaking out now under the bridge towards the open sea again. Terrific stuff, and we have a camera under that bridge as well. Just look at this helicopter shot, how smooth it looks, how perfectly inviting the water looks. Victory boats seven, five, and four are in fourth, fifth, and sixth places respectively, but there's nothing in it. There really is nothing in it. The victory team really mixing it there, and Spirit of Norway coming under a little bit of pressure now from the victory boat, almost coming alongside. Look at these two, side by side. Victory boat on the right hand side, Spirit of Norway on the left and it looks to me as though the blue boat has the legs in terms of top speed. Now is Bjorn Hjelston conserving his engines? We shall see, Viv, this is close stuff. It certainly is. Now the point is, we don't know here whether Steve has made Steve Curtis in Spirit of Norway, has made the right decisions with the propellers or whether he is just holding back at this stage of the race. He wants to finish, but it's not necessary for him necessary to be out in the front all the time. Spirit of Norway, you can see how close they are to the victory boat. Victory is pulling ahead. It may be that the victory boats have put a larger propeller on, knowing that a lot of the race was going to be in this calm water. Looking now inside the Bilboa boat, that's Leith Farron 
at the wheel. Look how busy his hands are on the wheel. Leith Farron is looking out through the window. He's also using the satellite navigation, but he's looking for those telltale marker boys. They're either fluorescent orange or they are yellow. He just really has to aim from point to point to take the shortest route possible. And it's not easy when you're being buffeted at these speeds across the water to actually keep the boat pointing in the right direction. The 52-year-old throttle man in there, Eduardo Polly, is forcing on. He's got something of a reputation of being a man who really knows no second best. He wants to win all the time and he shoves the throttles wide open and you can see the telltale black smoke. Every time he opens the throttle, it belches black smoke. There's a terrific battle going on further down the order, but indeed the race leader, Bill Bower, has a huge lead through the fjord, into the fjord in magnificent style in front of the crowds massing the banks here, Bill Bower heading upstream now, down the fjord towards the bridge. Jolly Motor, victory boat on the left-hand side, running for second and third. Jolly Motor, second place on the right-hand side of your screen. What a drive they're having again. They came into this round with just 15 points, fifth in the championship, so a long way to go. We're not halfway through this series yet. There are rounds in Turkey, there are two rounds in Dubai. Still a bit to do. Victory seven, third place, Ali Nasser, Randy Schism, running tight on the inside, into the harbour they go. Number nine, Jolly Motor, Lippi and Leone having gone through. We're now into lap four as they've come through Arundel. Four out of seven, so we're at the halfway stage and the boats are all remarkably well placed for a halfway stage for a race where the conditions vary so much around the course. Looking backwards from Victory 5, the water just rippling past the port side of the boat and we know Victory 5's going well. They are in fourth place. This is the third place boat, Victory 7. Ahead of it, Jolly Motor on the left-hand side disappearing out of view. So Victory 7 running well, the helicopter chasing it. In fact, there are times when the boats go so quickly, the helicopters struggle to keep up. Race leader, number one, Bill Bower, looking better by the minute here. I think this is an impressive performance, but look at Spirit of Norway, fifth place for Spirit of Norway. That won't do them a lot of good in terms of points total, although they do have a healthy 13-point cushion at this moment in time. What they really want to do, of course, is focus on the victory boats. Victory 5 just just ahead of them, not a lot ahead of them. Second and third you're looking at now. Jolly Motor, number nine, Lamborghini power running there on the left of your picture and the victory boat in third right with them. We're now on to Ken Thorne with number, number three, the Chaser Marine boat and the British boat who's come out here with so many problems but he's still running particularly well at the moment. That's a good point here, because he's running SeaTec diesels as well, as indeed is the race leader. And Ken Thorne told us that his engines were identical to those engines running in the one, number one Bilboa boat. The main difference, of course, is that Ken Thorne only has one gear. He has a single drive. This is the battle for second and third. On the left, Jolly Motor. On the right, it's Victory 7. And now we've got a boat that's broken down here. I think it's immersion. I th I think it's the uh, boat number eight immersion, which was the Molinari, uh, Molinari aluminium boat, um, and she looks as if she's broken. Third place, Victory 7, running well now, Ali Nasser. He's a very quiet man, hardly had much to say to us before the race, but I got the impression he was supremely confident. Jolly Motor, number nine, still in second place. They must sense maybe that a good point score is on the cards here. All they have to do is keep that boat going. The Lamborghinis stretch to the limit. V12 Lamborghinis, two of them, each costing something in the region of £60,000. And they probably get through six of those engines in a season. Those inside shots we had and the inboard shots from Jolly Motors showed you how much they have to do 
it's uh, not like a Grand Prix car where basically the track stays still, here the track moves, and to compensate for that you've got a number of controls, not just throttle and steering and brakes, you have a co very complex thing. We've now got uh, number seven, third place, Victory Seven, coming through, still running very well indeed, they're just coming between the islands, round the three marks that give them the separation there, back to five, which is the boat that is second as they came to Arundel, still running well, a good result here to Dave, will still keep her right up in the points. Uh, where's Bilboa? Bilboa storming through, there it is, taking a cautious way round. He will know, of course, Viv, that that's his nephew in the boat and presumably give him a wide berth. And they're coming through Arundel now, close into the turn, back into the calm water, number, number 12 running through there, and, and they have gone around the outside to get uh, into the straight water and off they go into the next fast section of the course. Into lap five, we are three quarters distance in this riveting race and it still is anybody's race. Looking at Jolly Motor, waiting for Jolly Motor in second place to come charging down but still it's victory seven, very close indeed, they're still in touch. And this is the race leader at the turn going out into the open water on lap five. Bill Boa now just forcing on. This is what we wanted to see, of course. We needed this big red boat to get on the score sheet in terms of points. And he is heading for 20 points as I speak. Spirit of Norway in fifth, Victory 4 in sixth. And in the middle of the score sheet there, you can see victories seven and five. So all of the victory votes in the top six. And going for second place is victory seven. Dropping down below, the Jolly Motorboat surely has the legs on speed. In fact, went past at such a rate of knots, it appeared to me that there might even be a problem with Jolly Motor, who is coming up behind the number 12, Tommaso Polly, who is being lapped, but at least he's still going and victory seven into second place. That is indeed, Viv, a terrific race so far for Ali Nasser. I think that's got to be unexpected because the Jolly Motors boat has kept that speed advantage, kept that place, and suddenly there, victory uh, seven came through at really quite a fast speed, and there's a speed differential there that was surprising. So I would have think perhaps we've got some sort of fault developing on Jolly Motor, but only time is going to tell. Oh, did you see that there? One of the victory boats hard out on the right side, absolutely thrown up. They weren't flying flat. They caught the back transom on the, on the port side first and threw them down, but they've recovered it well and they're coming back through now. Oh, no, it, it looks to me as though Lays Farron is again, Bill Boa is again sinking into the water. Down she goes. They have another problem with Bill Boa. And does this mean, oh, what a catastrophe for the big red boat. Three times in a row, we've seen it break. Now, I just wonder what the problem is. They're still running on, but they're not running on quickly. Second place, number seven now. Is he about to, in fact, take the lead? Bill Bauer, although she seemed to get back on the plane, uh, now she's through. She's, she's now back in third place, slowing badly. The new race leader is Victory 7, Jolly Motors in second place. And they're coming through round the mark now, back into the calm water. And we shall now see whether the place settings are genuine because Jolly Motor, being a very fast boat, will now want to be going and they'll get the idea of getting a first place again and competition is back on. Eduardo Polly as relaxed as ever, the engine compartments open, the cockpits open, getting ready for the photograph session, but uh, that is indeed bad news. Third place, Victory 5, still running as well. Andreas Ugland, number 90, with Jan Hillestad on the throttles in that boat, who actually is now managing director of OSB, the, the company promoting this Class 1 championship.
outside, the hatch on number five coming badly adrift, but that's not going to stop them. They've got about eight or nine miles to run now, and if, if it goes through, that is the way it's going to be. Yeah, the helicopter and... Oh, dear me, there's, there's a boat down. There's a boat sinking. There is a boat going down in the water. It looks as though that could be the number 12 boat. Oh, goodness well, now me, this, this is, is dramatic stuff. This is when the problems really start emerging because in that situation you can see the bows up in the water and the engine weight, of course, taking the stern down. The men are, are in there with um, their air supply, so hopefully we're not going to have that as a bad incident because with their air supply they should be OK to get themselves out. Jolly motor. Oh, boat on fire. That's one, looks like one of the, it's one of the victory boats. It, it looks, could well be victory vibe. The crew are on the, they're out on the front of the boat, both of them having bailed out. Serious engine fire from the victory boat. So, total drama here. Hands in the air, appealing for assistance. So, what catastrophe, what drama. The race going on, still in second place, Jolly Motor. It's becoming a bit like a battlefield here. That boat is seriously on fire. And we do have both of the men out. One of them, though, is completely wrecked. They are, it's absolutely destroyed. It's Victory 5. Certainly Victory 5 there. And they've had a, a major explosion, I suspect, of a fuel tank because it's the front of the boat that's been blown off. Uh, the fire is now in the engine room. Um, but. Uh, it would, it would appear, and the fire, of course, is ranging. Now, the safest place for them to be is in the water, but with a man injured, they're not going to want to be in there. We're now coming very close to the finish. Barry, they're approaching the finish line. Up here, they're coming past the last mark in towards Arundel. The run-in, Victory 7. There's utter drama going on behind him, but on the run-in, it's Victory 7. Boats in the water helping the stricken men, but Victory 7 running in now towards the finish. It's a very short, sharp run to the finish here at Arundel. It'll be Victory 7 moving on to this fantastic result for him. It'll be Jolly Motor who goes for second place. It's Victory 7 on the run in past the final boy. The chequered flag is out in the boat. It's Victory 7 taking the win here at Arundel in the Norwegian Grand Prix in a drama-ridden, incident-packed race. It's Victory 7 takes the win, and we're looking now for Jolly Motor to come home in second, getting that big boat slowed down and stopping before the dock is no mean achievement. And where is Jolly Motor? The second-place boat. It was a clean win for Victory 7, and it looks as though Jolly Motor may have had a problem on the final run-in. What drama! Viv, any idea? No idea at all. Jolly Motors disappeared completely out of our... Now look at how the fire has gone back up the bow. They will be, I think, in the water. Um, and uh, it, it, it really is a very dramatic race here. Here is Jolly Motors still running, but way back. I don't know what happened to her. She's still OK, she's still running. She's just come out past the lighthouse, but she's one minute down already since the first boat crossed the line. So either she may well have stopped to check that a rescue boat was near the boat on fire. In that situation, racing comes second, safety comes first. These drivers will stop, and in fact, it is a major ra a race, race rule that you always stop if necessary to give assistance. Curtis and Bjorn Jeltsen coming in now, I think, in third place, and that's going to upset your uh, scoring system there, Barry. They're getting the uh, drivers out of the water and onto the uh, one of the mark boats that are there. You can see the inflated um, uh, stretcher which they have on board and put into the water, safe and sound, thank goodness. Um, what we're still waiting to hear is whether the boat number 12, uh, how were the crewers fared from the boat that was being lifted out of the water here. Lovely to see. Uh, number seven, having got that long-awaited first place. Felix, that was the most dramatic thing I've seen in a long time. Tell us what happened. Uh, the thing just exploded. It was pretty, pretty dramatic. Uh, I've never felt something like that. Uh, 
Fortunately, uh, I'm okay. Uh, Saeed, my partner, uh, got hit a little harder than I did because the explosion was on his side and he's got some black and blue on his right arm and, and a little bit on his uh, right uh, knee. But uh, fortunately, uh, we're okay and uh, we should be ready for the next race. Uh, we're going to have to work on number the old number four and get it ready so we can do the Istanbul race. <laughs> Ali, that was a fantastic win. That was a long time coming. Yes, I was waiting a long time to be in this uh, Bantoon and to be number one. And I am lucky, or I am the luckiest guy when I am racing here in uh, Orondal, the third uh, race for me. And the, the last uh, second race, I, I was uh, third, and this time I am first. We didn't know how much lead we had, so we kept rolling pretty hard trying to maintain so nobody would sneak up from behind us. We've seen it where somebody will dive in behind you. You can't see them in the mirrors, and then at the last minute they pull out. We, were, we didn't want that to happen, so we kept the pace up. But uh, the boat handled great, and he drove it and just drove the wheels off of it. We had some, some close encounters in here on the buoys and some of the turns, and uh, it was a, a real aggressive race. We had a great time. It's my dream from the last seven years to win one race in the World Championship. But I finished many times in second place with the Jolly Motor in the 96 and the 95 with my old boat. Thank you very much. This is the World Races and uh, for next time, and maybe, <laughs> I don't know, I wish to win one race. It was very important for us uh, to score points here today. We, uh, unfortunately, we had uh, bad luck with one of the gearboxes. So in the second lap, we, uh, when we shifted, the engine died. We tried again to shift in the third lap and the same thing happened. So we were driving uh, actually all the laps on only two gears out of four. And uh, that was very tough especially on the inside, actually. So, after an action-packed final lap, it was Victory 7 who took the win, with Jolly Motor again filling the runner-up spot. Spirit of Norway found themselves elevated to third, and in doing so, retained a 13-point championship lead. But today's winner, Victory 7, are now firmly in second place in the title race, with the poly Farron pairing still pointless. The good news is that apart from shock and some bruising, all crew members escaped from today's dramatic incidents. The same, however, cannot be said for the boats.